Hey folks, welcome welcome back to the channel. My name is Mordecai the Hunter and today I wanted to talk about the leather that I wear for cowboy action and why I chose it. Now, like a lot of shooters, when I first started, I bought cheap and even experimented with making my own holsters. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I really enjoyed that journey. It gave me a lot of insight into why those holsters are cheap and what I actually need from a rig and what it takes to make something to accommodate those needs. Eventually, I got to the point where I really felt like my rig was holding me back, and I was going to need to make a serious investment in materials and time to improve my design. So, since I'm not retired and my free time is at a premium, I decided it would be better to invest in a professional rig. Which brings us here to the bench, where I have my Mernicle High Performance Series belt, a shotgun belt, a pair of strong side holsters, and a Quick Cal Ultra Extreme Cross Draw holster. We'll start with the gun belt, which appears to be a healthy 7 ounces or so, giving it a super solid but still supple feel. The suede lining is also super nice and makes the belt really stick to your pants so it doesn't move around once it's on. The belt itself comes with a standard single tongue belt buckle, and it's attached with two Chicago screws so that you can switch it out for your favorite trophy buckle. I actually made the belt pouch and the knife sheath here, uh, just from some scraps I had laying around since quality isn't as paramount here but Mernicle does sell similar items on their site if you want or need them. The pouch is just to hold rounds going from my saddlebags to the loading table, and the knife, of course, is for unjamming my 73 on the clock. While we're talking about belts, I'll also just real quick show y'all my new shotgun belt. Basically, it's the same quality as the gun belt, but with shot shell pockets. So I really like this roll top here, which helps you get your thumb behind the shells, and they use military grade elastic for the loops, so they don't wear out like leather does eventually. The shells fit nice and snug, but you're still able to pull them out easily when you're ready for them, so you're less likely to have shells come out on accident and cause you to fumble. Okay, so moving on to the main event here, I will start with the high performance holster. The first thing you might notice as you pick one of these up is that they are solid. There's no real wiggly or floppy bits, and the reason for that, of course, is that they are almost entirely metal lined. Now, metal lining is not a new idea. In fact, the first cheap rig I bought was also metal lined. But with these holsters, the lining and shape here is specifically designed to create retention for your pistol. Cowboy Action has a decent amount of movement in it, and I've been to matches where you flat out run from one end of the stage to the other. So the last thing you want to discover is that one of your pistols didn't make the journey with you. So just like Kydex holsters do for semi-autos, these holsters will keep your pistols in place while you're grooving, but still give you a nice smooth draw when you're ready for them. Obviously these are currently fit for my Blackhawks, but they can also be fit for Nuvicaros, Colt clones, or whatever you're using. This lip here comes up high enough to provide the necessary retention, and it's also flared at the top to help funnel the muzzle and cylinder into place when reholstering. Space is also cut out at the front and under the trigger guard to make room for your fingers when doing weak hand transfers. The holster also has a slight drop and a little bit of angle to make it easier to draw, which might look like a small detail, but makes a big difference. The next big thing is the ability to really nail these things down to your belt. This loop here is also metal lined, and you can tighten these screws down on the back once you figure out where you want the holster to live. This sandwiches the belt in between these two sides and clamps it in place. The best way to gain muscle memory and become more consistent is keeping your holsters in the same spot. So this is an important feature if you want to be competitive. I also like that if you have some life changes or want to upgrade your rig, you haven't marred the belt itself, which makes it more attractive to secondhand buyers. Another awesome perk that comes with the metal lining on the loop is that I can adjust the angle of the opening. So if you look at the loop as it fits on my belt, you can see how it kind of pushes the grips of the gun out and away from my body, which makes it easier for me to get to. The metal is malleable enough that you can mash around on this until you have it perfect, but then rigid enough that it stays there. Okay, so maybe this makes more sense if you can actually see it on the belt. So imagine this is on my person. See how it angles the grips of the gun way out away from my body? That's what I'm talking about. Now, if you like the angle on the last one, check out this holster. So this here is the Quick Cow Ultra Extreme Cross Draw Holster. Boy, is that a mouthful. 
You can see that the angle is even more aggressive so that it's easier to reach across your body and draw, and it doesn't get caught under your shotgun belt or anything. This holster has all the same qualities as the high performance holster, but it is specifically designed for a cross draw. My only gripe about this holster is that you do have to put holes in your nice belt to nail it down, but I think that's a pretty small price to pay and I can't think of a better way to secure it, so I just sucked it up and grabbed my leather punch. Anyway, on top of all that, they are of course professionally dyed, edged, and can be decorated as desire or budget allows. Everything is done with purpose and designed specifically for cowboy action shooting. If you're just starting on a budget, I know that cost is a barrier here since their stuff is not cheap. But these rigs are well made, specifically for cowboy action, and it will last until you get tired of it. The value that you get for the price is remarkable, even at full retail, so I feel like this is definitely a buy once, cry once situation. Now, after saying that, if you want to make your own holsters, it has been a fun and enlightening journey. Having a rig that you made with your own hands can be immensely satisfying. And because lots of cowboys do some amateur leather work, they understand the effort that goes into making them and can offer advice or help with patterns. But be warned, having traveled that path, I have spent an exorbitant amount of time and money trying to make a rig that checks all the same boxes. And in the end, I end up buying one anyway. So if you're just doing it to save money, you might come out disappointed. And remember, a lot of cowboys have extra rigs you can just borrow. And just like the guns, it's always nice to try before you buy. Anyway, I think that's about all I have to say about that for now. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or want to hear about something I didn't bring up. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all on the range.